Good evening, good evening, good evening, folks. <laughs> Beg my pardon for being a little late. <laughs> I tell you, boy, technical difficulties. Uh, I do apologize for the sh the scheduled stream that was supposed to happen uh, yesterday. Again, technical issues, man. Technical problems, my goodness. But I am very excited that I'm able to get on with you tonight. Not the way I had it planned. Uh... I have another software which allows me to mirror one of my other phones and I had difficulties uh, getting that software to cooperate, but we're here. Um, thank you all for getting on the stream tonight. I trust that everyone has had a great day today. I hope so. Uh, I hope you all had a fantastic holiday with your families. Um, I certainly did. I had a great time with my families and uh, I trust that you all had just a fantastic uh, holiday this year in, in spite of the cold because man it's been cold <laughs> oh my goodness in fact it's still cold i think it's like 25 or 26 degrees right now but over the weekend it was like in the teens and i think it even got as low as nine degrees so uh for those of you that see this stream and you're not over here on the east coast <laughs> and you're in a warmer client stay there because it's cold over here on the east coast where we are you know but um yeah so you know we had a pretty cold in fact they said this was the coldest uh coldest day so far since the since the the winter really just started so it's been pretty cold uh to my moderators if you can hear my voice clearly put a one in the chat room in the chat room put a one in the chat room shout out to abdul Shout out to Thomas Green. Thank you for getting on the stream tonight, man. Yeah, we're going to have an interesting dialogue tonight based on the current events. <laughs> oh, man. Based on the current events. If it's always something going on in the news. But this is an unfortunate situation that we're looking at right here. Uh, with uh, with Tory Lanez and uh, Megan The Stallion. I mean, I have my feelings and my viewpoints about it. Um, I want you to put in the chat room as we go forward. I'm going to throw a few questions out there and you tell me what you think uh, by typing it in the chat box. Um, but as we know, we've seen that uh, Mr. Tory Lanez was found guilty on all counts. I think I think a miscarriage of justice has taken place uh, where my man is concerned. I really do. Do I believe something happened to Megan Thee Stallion? Do I believe she was injured? Absolutely. I believe she was injured. So for those of you that hear the stream, uh, I'm not trying to say that she was not interested and that she somehow is being dishonest about her injuries. No, I believe she was injured, injured in some way. I just don't believe she was injured by who she accused. You got to realize something that the first eyewitness said that the girl shot her. Funny how the story changed over time and now it was all about Tory Lanez. I'll tell you what I really personally think. I think this was a case of uh, jealousy. I think this is a case of anger because uh, Kelsey was uh, had a crush on uh, she had a crush on uh, Tory Lanez. That's well documented. Everybody knows that. Um, Megan Thee Stallion certainly knew that and from what I understand those two also had a little altercation that same night you know and uh, it is alleged that Kelsey is the one that brandished the weapon from what I hear it was gunshot residue on her hand but there was no gunshot residue on Tory Lanez's hand so it's very strange to me how the tables can spin so quickly and if you paid attention to Megan Thee Stallion after this alleged shooting from Tory Lanez she went on a campaign of protect black women she went on this protect black women campaign where she did a series of concerts and in the backdrop of every one of those concerts she had a logo that said protect black women so she was already trying to capitalize already financially off of what the narrative was that was put out there that she had put out there that Tory Lanez had uh, had shot her in both feet. Now, I want you to use your common sense. 
if you're shot in both of your feet, I don't care. Just use the smallest caliber. Let's use a 22. If you're shot in both your feet, first of all, you can't walk. Number one, you can't walk. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how much muscles you got. Even if, if you're a man, you cannot walk. Much less if it's a woman shot in her foot. You can't walk. And here's the next question. Why did she get back in the car? She admitted that she got back in the car. The same car that she got out of. And yet she gave testimony in an interview. She declared in an interview. She declared even on the stand from what I understand just the other day when they went to court. That she was so afraid. All right. Well, you're so afraid. I get it. If you're so afraid. But what I don't get is if you're so afraid, why'd you get back in the car? I don't understand that. Now you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna be tickled at what excuse she gave for why she got back in the car. She said she got back in the car, <laughs> and I mean, I mean, you really can't even make it up. She said she got back in the car because she had a thong bikini on. Really, really, you just got shot. You said in both your feet. You said, Megan, and you said you were bleeding from both your feet. That's what you said, Megan. And yet, with two bleeding feet that were both shot, you got back in the car, and the only excuse you gave was that I had a thong bikini on. Wow. <laughs> oh, man, you can't make that up. Um, that is probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And you know that sounds ridiculous to you as well. Now... What makes it even more complicated <laughs> is that he was found guilty of all three counts. All three counts? Now, should he be found guilty of something if, in fact, he had a weapon that was unregistered? Absolutely. An unregistered weapon, we know, carries a charge, right? Um, but if she had fragments, gun, uh, bullet fragments removed from her foot, which is what they said. Bullet fragments. That's clearly an indication that she was not shot directly in her foot. It sounds more like a, a ricochet of sorts. Where the bullet may have hit the ground and ricocheted off. And then the bullet breaks up and then the fragments hit her foot. So we're going to go into the report. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. We're going to go into the report of... Uh, of what happened with Mr. Tory Lanez. I'm going to read this real quick too. You can see my screen. This was an article that was written by CBS News. CBS News. And uh, it was titled. Tory Lanez found guilty in shooting of Megan Stallion. Rapper Tory Lanez was found guilty Friday. On all counts in Los Angeles. In a Los Angeles trial. For shooting fellow rapper Megan the Stallion. Lanez whose real name is Daystar Peterson could face a maximum sentence of more than 22 years in prison and deportation back to Canada. The jury found Lanes 30 guilty of discharging a firearm with gross negligence, assault with a semi-automatic firearm, and carrying a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle. The jury got it right, Megan Thee Stallion's attorney. Now this is Megan Thee Stallion's attorney. This is his statement. He said the jury got it right. Megan Thee Stallion's attorney, Alex Sparrow. Mind you, Alex Sparrow, just in case you didn't know. Alex Sparrow, Spyro, he represents Rock Nation. Along with that Fernandez uh, uh, individual, you know, that young lady who got caught up in that big scandal back in the early uh, 90s as it related to drug trafficking. And from um, from her standpoint, what she was accused of, she rolled over on so many individuals. And they, as a result today, many of them are still incarcerated. Um, but she escaped <laughs> by turning over on so many. I forget her name exactly. Perhaps maybe you can write that in the, in the uh, chat box if you can remember her name. Um, I can see her face, but I just can't call her name off the top of my head. But anyway, this attorney... That was uh, representing Megan Thee Stallion is also Jay Z's attorney. She, he's the attorney for Rock Nation. But this is what he said. He said the jury got it right. Megan Thee Stallion's attorney Alex Spiral told CBS News in a statement, "I am thankful there is justice for Meg." 
Megan Thee Stallion, whose real name is Megan Pete, testified that Lanes shot at her feet five times following a party in the Hollywood Hills on July 12th, 2020. See, it's funny how the story has changed here. Because originally, and I'm sure many of you that heard this story, you heard that she was that she said clearly that she was shot in both her feet. Now it seems like the story's kind of taking a little twist here. Because what it's saying now is that he shot at her feet. Well, if she was shot at her feet by whoever shot at her feet, I personally don't believe Tory Lanez did it. I don't believe he shot at her feet. I believe it was the girl because that's what the first witness said. The first eyewitness said that it was the girl that shot, that had the gun that shot at her feet. It makes more sense because they both got into a physical altercation over Tory Lanez. Megan had, was having an intimate relationship with Tory Lanez and Kelsey also had an infatuation, infatuation over uh, Tory Lanez as well. So you had these two women that was threatened by each other having an altercation, physical altercation, over this one individual. At the, Not to mention they were both, it was compromised by alcohol. They were just coming from a party. They were just coming from a party at the home of, um, her last name is Jenner, Kylie Jenner. It was her birthday party, I believe. So, now coming from a party, add alcohol to that equation. All of them are turned up intoxicated from what i hear the un the understanding the argument started inside the limo where they were insulting one another as it related to their career and this is how it spiraled out of control okay he says here her name is megan pete testified that lane shot her in, in her feet five times following a party in the hollywood hills on july 12 2020 she told the court that the shooting was preceded by an argument between megan and lanes that got heated especially when they began attacking each other's music careers <laughs> i feel like that really rubbed him the wrong way she said during her testimony this is what she said on the stand i feel like that argument and those those insults towards his career rubbed him the wrong way according to the associated press he kept yelling and cursing she got out of the vehicle and tried to walk away when lanes leaned out and opened fire she said, leaving the back of her feet wounded. At one point, she yelled, he yelled, dance, B. She testified. She eventually got back into the car, which was pulled over shortly after CBS Los Angeles reported. Now, I want you to use your common sense, like I said earlier. And you tell me, would you get back into the car after you said you were so afraid she testified in saying that when the gunshots went off, she froze. She stood still and couldn't move. She was afraid to move left, made afraid to move right. She didn't know what bullet was going to hit her if, in fact, it would be the one that would kill her. This is what she said. And then she had, then she mustered up some tears while she gave that uh, ridiculous testimony. At the same time, she don't, she left out the fact that she got back into the car. I don't know. I don't know of a person that goes under those kind of circumstances. If you feel like you're in that much danger, that you would get back in the car. How much sense does that make? But see, it doesn't have to make sense today. Because you're in a cancel culture. This cancel culture is not looking for the truth. No. Not when it, not, not when it relates to a crime committed where a male and a female is concerned. Not always. Not that the truth is not there but they're not looking for the truth in a lot of cases, in so many cases. And I know many of you can admit that because um, here's the thing. If, if she got back into the car, that should be brought into question. That should be brought into question. And here's the other thing. Why did Kelsey ask for immunity? Now, you know, like I do, in any legal case where a crime has been committed, or an alleged crime has been committed. You have individuals that will ask for immunity. Immunity is usually to protect you against incrimination. You want to protect yourself. Why? Because there's something about what you're going to say or could say that could possibly lend guilt in your direction. It's funny how while she was on the stand, this is what Kelsey did. She pleaded, she uh, executed her Fifth Amendment right. Fifth Amendment in a court proceeding is only 
only uh, activated by the person being questioned. If in context, what they say will incriminate them. That's why they asked. That's why they that's why they execute their Fifth Amendment right. That's the only reason they would do it. No one executes their Fifth Amendment right unless they fear that what they're going to say, if it's to be kept in context, will incriminate them. So what is it that Kelsey's hiding? Could it be that she's the one that was actually the shooter? Hmm. Could that be it? What is it that she is hiding that made her, before the court proceedings even took place, sign off with an agreement from the prosecution that she would have immunity? Why? And if all of these factors are in place, and they are, tell me how a jury found Tory guilty of, of all three counts and this man is sitting in jail two days before the Christmas holiday. Doesn't make any sense. It seems to me that there is some real truths that is being hidden. But I want to hear what you guys think. I want to hear what you guys think. I'm really curious to hear what you think. So what I want you to do, if you can, I want you to put into the chat box, if you believe, shout out to Abdul, shout out to Gail. I want you to put into the chat box, if you believe, uh, put a number two, if you believe there's something that Kelsey is hiding where this case is concerned. Put a number two in the chat box, if you believe she's hiding something. Because if she wasn't, why would she why would she uh, ask for immunity? And why would she execute her Fifth Amendment right? So you tell me what you think about it. You can even type your feelings or your ideas about this case. Type that in the chat box as well. Number two, shout out to Dwayne. Thanks for getting on the stream, man. What do you think? I want you guys to engage with me tonight on this case. Tell me, type in the chat box what you believe, uh, in your opinion is the deal that's going on with this case because it's really it's there it seems like a miscarriage of justice where this case is concerned where tory is concerned now is he reckless at times absolutely what young man at 25 who was already a millionaire is not going to be reckless he's going to be reckless you know i believe all of them are reckless you know but what do you believe about this does he deserve this kind of uh, charge and certainly, do you believe he deserves to get 22 years potentially and potentially deported back to Canada? Tell me what you think. Type it in the chat box. I, th I think there's a serious miscarriage of justice going on here. I don't know. Uh, it's funny. It's funny who the players are. That's what really makes it very interesting. It's funny who the players are in this case. You got uh, Attorney Spyro, who's the actual, <laughs> who's the attorney for Rock Nation. You know, I, it's, I find it very interesting how he's the attorney for Rock Nation. And yet, uh, you know, connected with so many individuals that have s such colorful backgrounds, <laughs> you know, from uh, cases times past. I mean, big cases, too, you know, and uh he also happens to be Megan the Stallion's uh, attorney, you know. So tell me what you think, guys. Tell me what you think. Type in the chat box. I'm hoping I'm seeing everybody. Uh, I don't see any response yet, but uh, type in the chat box what you think. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, I don't see it. Maybe I'm missing it. I don't know. I'm not seeing the comments. Okay. I don't know why? I don't know why sometimes I can't see you guys' comments, but... Oh, well. No, they're not showing me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, they're not showing me. Okay. So, well, let's continue. Um... Um, I find it interesting. This is what she said. I'm going to continue with this article. She said, uh, let's see, where was I before? In, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Okay, here we go. 
It says she got out the car and tried to walk away when Lanes leaned out and opened fire. She said, leaving the back of her feet wounded. At one point, he yelled, dance, B. He, she testified. She eventually got back into the car, very strange, which was, pulled, which was pulled over shortly, right? She said she needed surgery to remove bullet fragments in her feet. In a statement released immediately after the verdict was read in Los Angeles County District Attorney, George Gaskin praised Megan the Stallion bravery, saying that she showed incredible courage and vulnerability with her testimony despite repeated and grotesque attacks that she did not deserve women especially black women are afraid to report crimes like assault and sexual violence because they are they are too often not believed now listen to this listen to this uh this attorney you know <laughs> i mean it's amazing with the kind of narrative they're trying to spin on this story they're trying to make it now a case of and then they, they had the nerve to associate it with the likes of uh what's his name with the likes of this guy uh the one that just got recently caught up in the courts um with uh a lot of sexual crimes multi-billionaire forget his name i think they're gonna call his name out here it says in a statement released immediately after the verdict, Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gaskin praised Megan the Stallion for bra her bravery, saying that she showed incredible courage and vulnerability with her testimony despite repeated and grotesque attacks that she did not deserve. Women, especially black women, are afraid to report crimes like assault and sexual violence because they are, are too often not believed. George Medesine, an attorney for Lanes, told CBS News by phone that the verdict was disappointing adding that Lane's legal team will be looking at all necessary options, including an appeal. I hope so. I hope so. He should appeal this because there was certainly a huge, huge miscarriage of justice, no doubt. During the trial, Megan Thee Stallion said that despite the shooting, she agreed to get back in the vehicle with Lane's, his bodyguard, and a third person because she was wearing a thong bikini. <laughs> And also felt like her manager would know what to do if she was able to get in touch with him, according to CBS Los Angeles. Now, listen, folks, if I think my life is in danger and the gun is still present in the car, why would I get back in the car? What, to help him finish the job? That sounds ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's amazing how this kind of information can go right over the right over the head of the legal teams that are in the courtroom and they can still yield a guilty charge against them knowing all of this information it just makes no sense it's like they blinded their eyes to what they and closed their ears to what they heard you know now i will tell you this if he committed a crime like any of us he should pay the price but make sure it's clear and cut not some botched bundled case that makes no sense, all right? She also testified that Lanes had offered her $1 million to keep quiet about the incident since he was on, on probation, but a lawyer for Lanes stated that wasn't true. In an April interview with CBS Morning co-host Gail King, Megan Thee Stallion described, I saw that interview. Oh man, she could have got an Oscar award for that one. Described that led up to the shooting and how she reacted. She said the argument was with two people in the back seat. She said, so I asked the driver to pull the car over. Like, I'm done with this. And I should have stayed out of the car. Like, I should have not got back in the car. Oh, now you're thinking that you shouldn't have got back in the car. But why, it's funny to me why her, why the reality of her getting back in the car didn't lend doubt to the jury. So you got to understand something, folks. When they want you, it doesn't matter what's being said in the courtroom. It doesn't matter what's being said in the courtroom. If they target you. It's amazing how her getting back into the car didn't lend doubt to the jury. It's amazing how the girl that was in the car with them, who decided to ask for immunity of which she was granted, didn't lend doubt to the jury. It's amazing how when she executed her fifth amendment right on the stand that it didn't lend doubt to the jury it's amazing 
how all of these things did not give doubt to the jury because to convict on anything you have to have a conviction without a reasonable shadow of doubt you can't have a shadow of doubt but i'm looking at a whole bunch of shadows here and they still charge this man with three counts guilty or on all three counts as if there was no shadow of doubt clearly there was a lot of shadows that nobody cared to question that nobody cared to question well I feel pretty good at knowing that I believe he's going to beat it on appeal. He's going to beat it on appeal. I believe that. Will he have to sit, unfortunately, behind bars for a little while while he fights his case? Yeah, I think he will. But I believe ultimately in the end, he's going to win it on appeal. Absolutely. I believe that. She says, uh, and I should have stayed out of the car. Like I should have not got back in the car. <laughs> I shouldn't have got back in the car. Then she says, and they was like, Megan, just get back in the car. We're almost there. Imagine you're so afraid. You're so traumatized. But someone can yell, Megan, just get back in the car. We're almost there. And like, just get back in. So I get back in the car, she says. It's getting worse. <laughs> As the argument escalated, Megan the Stallion said she got out of the car and that's when she told King that Lanes fired a gun at her several times. So I get out of the car and it's like everything happens so fast. Megan the Stallion told King, this is her interview with Gail King, and all I hear is this man screaming and he said, dance B, and he started shooting. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm just like, Oh, my God, like he shot a couple of times and I was so scared, but she got back in the car with all of this fear. She says that she had of her life. She gets back in the same car where the gun is still present. And she but yet she's still so afraid. This sounds real fishy to me. Very, very fishy to me. Somebody's covering for someone. And this whole case has so many holes in it. So many holes are in it. And yet this man is guilty and found guilty by a jury. <coughs> With all three counts. Which could give him potentially 22 years in prison. In addition to being deported back to his uh, native country of Canada. Very, very large miscarriage of justice. Very large miscarriage of justice. And you know, the thing that's so sad in this country is that these kind of, uh, these kind of miscarriages of justice are happening all the time. All the time. They, they, they happen all the time. And they go unanswered. They go unchallenged. They say, well, he was, he was judged by a jury of his own peers. He was judged by the legal system that we have here. And if they said he was guilty, then uh, he must be guilty. Really? Really? With all the holes that I just, I just read just in this article alone. And if you go back and watch the Gail King interview, you will see the Oscar award winning act of all times. She probably should go into acting because um, she's, She's pretty good. She probably should go into acting. And um, and I know, I know, and I, I know some of you who, who may hear this stream later, you're going you're gonna to get in your feelings. I can't believe he's talking like that about Megan. Says she was shot. She was hurt. She was this. She was that. Knock it off. Because here's the thing. If anybody is going to be charged with anything, that goes for any of us. We want it to be done justly. We don't want someone to just say we did something. We want them to be able to say it and prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. If it can be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt and we, any of us, are in fact guilty, I'm 100% in support of prosecution. No doubt. I believe, the, I believe the law is for the lawless. No doubt. That's why we have laws. That's why we have consequences for breaking the law. I support those consequences. If you're guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt, you should be 
you should face the consequences. But make sure that it's beyond a shadow of a doubt and not just somebody's bogus accusation that cannot be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. I don't care if it comes from the mouth of a man or whether that bogus accusation comes from the mouth of a woman, regardless of nationality. If you can't prove a case, then you cannot convict because it's not what you know, it's only what you can prove. That's the court system we live in. That's the justice judicial system we live in. If it's ran uh, justly, no one should be convicted without beyond a shadow of a doubt without that case being proven. But we know that's not the case. So many people are behind bars right now. So many people have been deported even in times past for crimes that were not legitimately proven. Now, this was a case of three individuals, one of whom was in an intimate relationship with Tory, another one who potentially was in some kind of relationship with Tory, these two females found out about it one was her best friend quote unquote kelsey and her assistant to megan that was her assistant forward slash best friend who had a crush on tori so you got two women now cat fighting over the fact that they both are attracted to this same guy and in the end bullets begin to fly and he takes the blame. Ah, it sounds kind of funny to me. Sounds kind of fishy to me. Sounds kind of fishy to me. And then when she explains the whole story, there's holes all in this case. There's holes all over the story. Her story makes no sense at all. Not enough to give him a conviction of potentially 22 years of his life and potentially to be deported back to his native country. Again, a case that's going to be proven where conviction is had by whoever whoever it is has to be done without a shadow of a doubt and i'm certain with you hearing this you can see that there's so much shadow of a doubt in this story you, you don't even have to be a genius to figure it out i mean you don't even have to be super smart to hear all the holes that's in this case you know we're going to find out how this case goes going forward uh i'm gonna keep my ear to the ground with it um, I would like to see him get judged. I want to see this 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 young man lose his whole career over. Um, let me see what we got here. I see somebody coming. Okay, Dwayne. Dwayne said, "Let's see. All right, let me see here. Yeah, Dwayne said the only crime he committed was having an unregistered gun in his possession, which is a third degree charge. I agree." I agree. The, and then here's the next question. Was it his gun? That's another question. Was it really his gun? Because you got to remember what I said earlier. The eyewitness said that it was the girl, meaning Kelsey, that fired the weapon. Gunshot residue was found on Kelsey's hand. But there was no gunshot residue found on Tory Lane's hands, from what I understand. And I agree with you. I think the friend did the shooting. I do agree with that. Dwayne, that was that's excellent. I do agree with that. Abdul said, I believe that instead uh that instead time in prison, he should have received community service and got counseling. <laughs> well, yeah, that's possible. But the thing is, for him to get counseling and get community service, he would have to be charged with something. You know, and um perhaps maybe counseling and community or community service because the because of having a gun in his possession if in fact they found out it belonged to him let's see what else other comments we got here um okay gail said i really didn't follow this story but the charge doesn't fit the crime i agree i agree i agree thank you for your comment and uh gail said again these young black adults that are in the entertainment industry need to realize that you are in another stage in your life and that you have to learn how to keep what you work hard for. Stop thinking you can do as you please without any consequences. I 100% agree with that statement. Yeah, and you know, and, and, and with that as a backdrop, if anything can be learned from this, I think what can be learned 100% is, uh, is what Gail said right here. A lot of these young people and these entertainers that get into the industry, a lot of times, many of many of them come from a background where they didn't have much. 
All right. We know that um, they didn't have a whole lot and they didn't have a whole lot of education as, as, as it relates to what money can do for you in terms of good and what money can do to hurt you if you don't have the right mindset. So a lot of times when these young people get money, they get real reckless and get real loose with it. They get a sense of uh, untouchableness, so to speak, <laughs> where they don't feel like they can be touched. And they just kind of throw caution to the wind and they, they do all kinds of things and they never think about the consequences. So that's a good statement. Uh, thank you for that uh, that comment, Gail. I agree 100% with that. I agree 100% with that. After about, Gail says again, after about five years, it's going to come out that he is innocent. But it will be too late because his career will be over. I don't, that's possible. Um, I believe he has a loyal fan base. Uh, if in fact he does five years before it's finally over, um, I don't believe his career will be over. I believe it'll be it'll be short stopped for a period of time, just like the R. Kelly case. His whole career has been short stopped for all these years, but I don't believe it's over because there's a there's a loyal fan base to these individuals that will sit with anticipation, waiting for them to return. I just hope it goes. I hope it goes a lot faster than than five years, though. I do, and uh, I hope it goes a lot faster. But um, if anything, if anything can be taken away from this case. You know, if I were to speak directly to a lot of uh, entertainers that are young, that are out there, you know, whether you're R&B or whether you're a rapper, you, you guys really need to pay attention to what you see happening to others. You know, stop trying to test the waters to see if it's going to happen to you. Um, so many examples that have already happened to other entertainers for doing reckless, silly things, usually under the influence of alcohol, usually. I can tell you, um, I've I, I've acted out personally in my lifetime, when I was younger, that I in a way in ways that I probably would not have acted out, had I not been under the influence. And then the next day you, you you're saying to yourself, "Man, was I stupid?" You know, you re, you you remember what you did, and you kind of vaguely remember what you said, but you know that if you weren't under the influence, you probably wouldn't have done that. You know. So if there's anything that could be taken away from it, you know, um, you young people that have made it and, and made it successfully out of your uh, out of your previous financial situations, whether you came up in a low income area, low income housing. Or whether you even came up in middle class as a middle class person, your family had some reasonable um, financial status. Once you made it to multimillionaire status. You need to pay attention to the ones that made bad mistakes in the past who had the same kind of success that you have, if not more, and they've lost everything, lost everything based on one bad decision. That's all it takes. It's only one. You're only one decision away from total failure. I don't care who we are. We're only one decision, one bad decision away from complete failure. And everything we've worked for, everything we've strived for can be gone just like that with one bad decision, you know? So if that's, I believe that's what can be taken away from this situation. I say uh, justice for Tory Lanez. And I, I say the truth come out for Tory Lanez, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And whatever he's guilty of, I don't believe it's worth him serving 22 years in prison. Absolutely not. I believe there are some individuals that are not telling the truth in this whole case. I believe that truth is bottled up between Megan the Stallion and Kelsey. They know what happened. I don't believe what he's being accused of is the whole truth. You know? So, again, justice for Tory Lanez. Free Tory Lanez. Give him a fair trial. And I do hope he uh, wins this appeal. I wish success to his legal team in getting him the appeal. So that he can have his his just day in court again. He didn't testify in his own behalf, even though they was hoping that he did. And I, 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 his legal team suggested that he not do that. I agree. I agree. Because if he had gotten on that stand, they would have ripped him apart. 
The cross-examination would have tore him apart. They would have started bringing up all kinds of cases, his previous cases. They would have started bringing up things that had nothing to do with this particular case just to rattle his cage and to sway the jury. This is what I believe would have happened had he testified in his own behalf. So it's a good thing he didn't do that. And uh, shout out to his legal team for advising him not to do that. You know, again, I thank all you guys for getting on the stream tonight. Uh, this, is going to, this is a relatively short stream. I do thank you for getting on the stream. I just want to touch this case a little bit. I'll be coming back as I keep it up to date, finding out as uh, different as different information unfolds. And I'll be discussing it again. I'm going to be talk. I'm going to also be doing the uh, the stream where I was going to be dealing with uh, <laughs> our good bishop, <laughs> Mr. Bishop Lamar Whitehead. Um, the stream that was canceled for yesterday, but we're going to be doing it again. And I'm going into that. So again, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. Shout out to all of the new subscribers on YouTube. As you come into the building, please hit the subscribe button on your way out. Hit the share button, support the stream so we can keep this content coming. And with that being said, I am your host, Charles Chambers of Let's Talk About It Now. And with that, we are out. Have a good night, folks. <laughs>